and welcome back to Rigged by Rachel. Thank you for clicking on today's video. I'm super excited that you decided to click and thank you for joining. I hope you'll stay with me today. Today we're going to be making farmhouse candles. In my previous video, I had mentioned that one of the inspirations for the channel was the candles that I created. I showed these to a couple people and they were pretty excited about them too, so I thought, well, maybe I should put the video out there and show YouTube how to make them. These are the original candles. Hope that's focusing. Oh, I can be like a real YouTuber. Oh, yeah. These are the candles I was talking about in the video. They're awesome. They're battery operated. They're really easy. You can put them anywhere and they just work with one battery. It's pretty simple. I'm pretty sure this battery is dead. Otherwise, this baby would light up for you and it's really cool. This is the only one that works that I have. I have purchased so many of these candles over the time and they just continuously fail over and over and over again. I can't tell you how many times I've bought these candles, brought them home, excitedly put my batteries in them, which let's just add are not cheap either. And then I put them wherever I'm gonna put these little candles and sure enough, they didn't work. Oh, the frustration one feels when they come home all excited. Now I don't live just around the corner, okay? I didn't just a hop, skip, and jump to this little town that I drove to to get these candles, y'all. I'm talking like an hour and a half, two hour drive. And the whole way there, I'm geeking about candles, you know? I mean, so I figured, you know what? I'm all done here. I'm not gonna keep doing this to myself. I'm not gonna keep spending all this money on these candles. I'll figure out how to make this myself. And that's what I did. You rig it, baby. So these are basic Dollar Tree candles. I mean, I think you can find them any time of the year. I typically find them around Christmas time and I buy a ridiculous amount of them because it's just easier that way. But I have seen these in the craft department other times of the year. I learned how to take this little candle and turn it into this little farmhouse primitive candle. Aren't these just so fun? They are so fun. If you have a really fun little uh, cast iron holder, which is exactly what I'm going to be putting mine in, these work perfectly. The bottoms are a little looser than some of the um, ones you buy in Shipshawana or wherever you're getting your farmhouse candles from, but there's ways we can thicken those too. I can dip them in wax or sometimes I just add a little bit of something to the bottom of my dish, but we'll get to that later. I'm getting so for today's craft, you're gonna need a couple of things that you can find most of the time at the Dollar Tree and at any craft store. Your Dollar Tree candle, of course. You're gonna need some Mod Podge. I've tried to use other glues. Mod Podge definitely works the best. They do sell the little bottles of Mod Podge at the Dollar Tree, so this is something that you can pick up there. The other thing I did find that works a whole lot better on your second coat, which really gives it that texture and the thickness of these candles, is using a spray Mod Podge. This thing saves you so much time, so much frustration, and so much mess. So definitely something worth picking up. You're gonna need a foam brush. You're gonna need some seasonings. I have three different types of seasonings here. I have pumpkin spice, chili powder, and nutmeg. These are totally things you can use. What's fun about them is each one is going to bring a different shade to the candle. So if you're looking for something a little darker, a nice nutmeg is fun. If you're looking for something lighter, even a ginger is really cool. It makes a really unique looking candle. Chili powder is really fun for a nice red tone. Today we're gonna go with a cinnamon and a cocoa powder. So we're gonna go with these two today. Let me turn that around for you. And we're going to use these seasonings to make two different types of farmhouse primitive candles. Last couple things are optional. Um, if you can find other ways to do this, that's fine. You're rigging it, right? It's not perfection here, but I do like to use a paintbrush. This helps to wipe off the flame when you go to twist it back in. It has kind of a thread, so you want to be able to clean that off. I also like to use a styrofoam craft foam and stick a skewer stick in it. This works really, really nice for drying your candles during that period where you do coat one and coat two. And the third thing is going to be this Rust-Oleum spray. Uh, you're gonna hear me talk about this particular spray paint a lot. It's a very interesting spray paint. It leaves almost a textured look. I love this stuff. I have several cans of it in several shades, so you are gonna see me come up with it a lot. But this works really well in spray painting this ugly gold base. I mean, if you like it, it's not ugly though. So don't like, don't let me hurt your feelings or nothing, baby. You do what you wanna do here. But, I mean, you know what I mean? That's just, I'm, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna spray paint this one just to give you an idea of what this can look like spray painted. I also really like to just use the cast iron uh, 
folders as much as I possibly can. So if you can get your hands on something like that, I definitely encourage you to do it. Or if you can find something cool to spray paint, just do it. Spray paint everything. So that's it. That's all you're gonna need to do this project today. I'm going to kind of move the camera around a little bit today and put it on my hands so you can just see what I'm doing during the craft. So this is the last time I'll probably see you till the end of the video. So I hope you enjoy. Please let me know in the comments if you do these candles because I'm so curious to know how other people use them and tag me on Instagram or wherever you use them. All right guys, so what I like to do is get everything set up. Today I'm gonna do it right here on this cookie tray that I've covered in some aluminum foil. It just seems a whole lot easier when you have a spot to set it up in. But we've got everything we need right in front of us and I'm gonna use a paper plate to be pouring my cinnamon and putting my Mod Podge on. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and just take off the top of our candle. And you can go ahead and set that aside because you're not gonna use it quite yet, okay? So just set it down, do what you need with it. You don't need that right now. What you are going to need is your foam brush, okay? So this is very simple, very basic. Like I said, you're gonna take your brush and you're going to put it on the candle. I mean, I'm telling you guys, it doesn't get much easier than this, okay? We're gonna do little sections at a time. Don't worry about it being completely uh, even or flat or anything. Actually, as a matter of fact, the more lumpage you have, the better texture you're gonna wind up with. And then just roll your candle in the cinnamon, okay? All right, this is not difficult. We're gonna repeat it on all sides. I mean, don't even stress. That's why we have a paper plate down here. It's okay. What did I say, y'all? We're not here for, for, for Wow. I'm just not even gonna try, okay. You can sprinkle it if you're not like feeling like dipping it, okay? Do whatever it makes you happy. Okay? Do a little little tap tap. We'll tap tap on it, okay? Repeat it on all of the sides. It's okay if we're getting it up here. See how it's starting to Kind of layer up and even thicken a little. Oh, I'm loving it. Never see that that meme years ago, that video. She said to be loving it like McDonald's. That's how I feel right now. I'm loving this like McDonald's. Okay, now you got all your sides done, and that's okay. You're missing some spots. Don't worry about it. You're gonna tap it off again. Tap, 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 tap. And you're gonna take your little candle and you're gonna put it right on your drying skier stick. Isn't that just groovy? And you're gonna let that dry for about, ooh, 10, 15 minutes. Next, we're gonna do your little flame here. It's just so cute. You wanna avoid getting it on the battery. As a matter of fact, when I first started doing these, I used to tape off the battery. Now I'm not nearly as worried about it. I kinda of have a better idea of what I'm doing. I also realize you don't have to be perfect. So what I like to do is go around the base of the candle and make sure you are getting a good amount around there. You wanna really make sure that's getting enough, okay? And then for the wick, I like the wick to be a little uh, worn too. We want that to look primitive as well. So I don't mind doing a drop or two that's extra. And then you just sprinkle the top. And then don't forget to tap, tap. A tap, tap. This you can just lay flat because it's no big deal. You let it dry for about 15 minutes. The second candle I'm going to do is actually different from the Dollar Tree candle. These are candles that I ordered online and they have a different top. So I'm pretty excited about these. They have a little more narrow of a base and they're gonna fit into a couple more of the options for candle holders that I currently have. Just went ahead and moved the powder back on that one. We're gonna use the same tray, no big deal. These are fun too, you can do them for like young girls who aren't looking for necessarily a primitive look, 
but maybe a young look. I have also taken candles and colored the Mod Podge before and put glitter on them for my daughters and they thought that would be pretty cool. So there's the second candle and this one's done in the cocoa powder. This little candle flame is gonna be a little bit different. Screwing that one on there, I'm a little more concerned with the threads. Now these are candles that I got on Amazon. I don't know, it was a 10 pack. It wasn't very expensive at all. So if anybody's curious, I can put a link in the description box, but I probably won't bother until somebody tells me they want one. So I'm just gonna do it like that. And we're gonna let that dry. We'll see you back in about 10 minutes. Okay, so something I should have mentioned earlier is when you go to spray the Mod Podge on your first coat and your second coat, I highly suggest putting on a pair of gloves because it will ruin your manicure. And honey, if you just got the nails done, I understand you are not gonna wanna ruin them. So throw on a pair of gloves before you take your candles. I like to spray mine outside or in a garage or a well-ventilated area. So I highly suggest to do that. I am going to take mine outside and spray them. So I'm not gonna take you with me while I do that. Just take them and spray them. Your candles should look something like this right now. See, there's this spot that doesn't have any, that's okay. We're gonna spray it with the first coat of Mod Podge spray and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna repeat this whole process again and we're gonna let them dry. And after that, we're going to spray them one more time with the final coat and then your candles are going to be all done. So we'll see you back here in just a minute. All right guys, so they should look something like this now. We've sprayed our first coat of the Mod Podge on it, and now we are going to do a second coat with the Mod Podge and the powders. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this time with the cocoa one. To apply, I'm going to press it into it this time instead of smoothing it onto it. So we're just gonna press it. And just kind of blot it all over. I won't bother to film this whole one this time, but you get the idea. You're pressing, you're making a little bit of a texture on it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're rigging it, baby. Because you're going to have to break up the cocoa powder a little more than you did the nutmeg, but it's worth it. It's gonna give it a really great texture. So really kind of beat it into that candle. Take your cocoa powder and sprinkle it on there. Okay. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Let it dry. Repeat with the nutmeg, all right? And we'll be back in a little bit. And we're gonna spray a second coat. As for your wicks, I do like to do a nice second coat, at least on this rim part of this one. On this one, I'm not really sure if I'm going to bother with a second coat, but I am gonna dab this a second time and I have not sprayed this. I will only spray the top of them one time. So I'm going to add that second coat now. You don't have to be precise with this. You can just kind of stick it just in the corner a little bit. Oh, that was filming. Okay. And this was the cinnamon. Sorry, I realized I just called it nutmeg a second ago. <laughs> Whoops. It's cinnamon. Tap, tap. Tap, tap, okay? Let that sit and dry. All right, so we're in my garage. We're gonna go ahead and hit these with the final coat of the Mod Podge. I put a piece of scotch tape under the bottom to protect the magnetic battery that connects your light. So I'm gonna put those on the paper plate and I'm just gonna leave them as they are and turn the plate as I spray them. It's pretty simple. Make sure you shake your Mod Podge for a minute before you go ahead and hit it with that final coat. And there it is, y'all. Easy as pie. I mean, aren't those just... Stop. So cute. And then hit your candles with their final coat of Mod Podge as well. Like I said, if you want these to be extra shiny, the best thing to do is actually hit them with um, some of the liquid Mod Podge, the glue. But I kind of like the dull candle look a little bit more. It gives it that very primitive look that we're going for, and I'm stuck to this. So oh, don't fall over. So the top one was the cinnamon, and now we have the cocoa powder. 
And I told you earlier, if you had spots that were missing to not stress about it, I meant that. Because they're gonna look fine, honey, don't worry. These candles are gonna look great in your home. Or if you're like me, a weirdo, and you like to put them in your car or in your camper. Oh, stop, isn't that just cute? All right, y'all. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these candles. Next thing we'll do is assemble the candles and I'll show you some great ways to use them. All right, guys, I'm gonna quick hit this with spray paint. Sorry, we're in my garage again, so forgive the mess. I don't have a pretty workspace, you know. So this is just a soup can, and we're gonna spray paint this. We're gonna wrap it with some jute, and this is gonna be another great way to put your candles in something if you have nothing else. And we're gonna spray paint this gold one, okay? Gonna hit it, turn it. We're gonna have to do two coats anyway, so don't worry about perfection. You know, rig it, baby. I know y'all, a soup can, what? Turn it, you're gonna get some paint on your fingers, but that's okay, hit the inside a little bit. Bam! Okay, so we're gonna take our little soup can that we've spray painted, and this is just jute twine. You can find this in the automotive department at any Dollar General or at most Dollar Trees. Nice thing about this is you have ridges to guide you. And you're just gonna wrap it. This doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be done a certain way. You're just going to wrap it. When you're all done wrapping it, just take a little piece of your hot glue, put it on the end of the jute, let it dry for just a second, and then you can cut off your jute. So I created a little bit of an X cross here. You can leave it just like it is, or if you want to, you could glue a cute little leaf for fall or something for Christmas or a star. And then we're gonna glue a small piece of craft foam inside of the can, and then we're going to put our candle inside of it. Just gonna cut. A small little square. We'll put a little glue on the bottom of the craft foam. I'm going to stick it in the bottom. And there you can stick your little Dollar Tree candle in there. Hey guys, we're back. We've got our finished candle product here. Uh, I've tried to film this a few times now, so I'm really hoping that this works. Um, candle holder I think looks great. It was a really awesome way to utilize your candle and not have to spend a whole bunch of money. We wrapped it in jute, spray paint. These stars can be found online. You can even take off some of the charms from the pillar candles from Dollar Tree. Throughout the year, they have an assortment of different things. Leaves, acorns, pretty cute. So that could be something fun you could glue on it too, or you could just leave it in the jute. Either way, it looks great. It's a really awesome primitive thing for your home. The next one is a box I picked up at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. I bought these a couple years ago to do craft shows and COVID came, so that didn't work. But I'd used a box similar to this. I'd put a candle in it and some moss, and I'd given it as a gift. And the woman loved it so much, she asked me to make another one so she could give it to a friend of hers. So I thought, well, why not make some more of these? And I love this one, Farmhouse Christmas Trees. It's adorable. This is the candle that I ordered from Amazon. I can put a link in the description box if anybody is curious what candles these are. I'm not gonna lie to you, I love these and I'm going to be buying more of them. I really like the way that they work together. Sorry, I heard some screaming upstairs and I was gonna stop, but I think we're just gonna keep going. They're fine. So this next one is a candle holder. It's actually a candle that I got from Tractor Supply Company for Christmas a couple years ago. I loved it. These are really nice candles if you want to pick one up, burn it, and then you're left with a really cute tin at the end. I thought, you know what, I'll put a little moss in it, put a candle in it, and I've been using it ever since, and I absolutely love it. Last but not least is the uh, cast iron candle holders. I love these. This is what initially started my entire obsession and process with these candles. I'm going to be placing this one on our headboard. It's going to look really nice with our lanterns. You can find these on Amazon. I pick them up from Chipshawana when I go. 
and I hope that this display of candles has given you guys some inspiration to decorate your homes too. And there you have it guys, candles that cost $15 in Shipshawana. I make them for a dollar and you can too, rigged by Rachel. I hope that you try these candles and if you do, please leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. I hope you click subscribe. I hope you join the channel and we can get to know each other and we can do some crafts and have some fun together. Next upcoming is going to be the kitchen. We are going to be renovating it, a very slight renovation. You don't know, rig by Rachel style. So I hope you stick around. I hope you join. Don't forget to like the video and comment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.